Sensei Kujaku. Hi, welcome to the Sensei Kujaku show. We get a lot of questions from uh, viewers who send us emails with lots of personal finance questions, questions on money and life. And so I thought, why not do an episode with an expert who can answer all these questions with real life experience, who's experienced all these things and gone through so much in life and can answer them with a very real perspective. So Cyrus Brocha, welcome to the Sensei Kujaku show. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I feel a lot of happiness here today. I'll, and then of course, the, something bad happened. So the happiness is because it's a South Mumbai uh, podcast. Okay, so I'm, my office is close by, rather my wife's office. This is also your wife's office. So look at the way the world has changed. Woke as we are. So I was very happy. I, I used the gym to work out, Bombay Gym Kana to work out. So from there, I you know, it's all good, right? And uh, so I was really happy that it's this, this area. I just feel happy when I'm in South Mumbai. I don't know. I spend a lot of time outside in Bandar and beyond. And then I come here and then this terrible thing happened where you said for sound, we have to shut the AC and my heart skipped a beat. So you have to understand that now I'm under a lot of anguish and pain, but I will fight the good fight for you. I want to first ask you, why is it called Sensei uh, Kujaku? Kujaku, it's a Japanese. So, so Japanese name. So yeah. Sensei, of course, is as you know, master, master. teacher, uh, depending yeah. on the context. And I wanted, I wanted the rest of the name to have a connection to India. Mm. So I thought of, okay, let's think of animals. Mm. So the first one naturally was tiger. Right. The challenge is tiger in Japanese mm -hmm. is Torah. Okay. Which is also the Jewish Jewish religious oh book. And you'll be looking for funding from some <laughs> Jewish billionaire at some point. So fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. So it's but you do, do realize that every word will be something in some other culture. This was too like, it's like if I name my channel Sensei Bible, yeah. people are expecting something very different when they when they right, view, right? right. So, so, so I was like, okay, I definitely can't do that. So I was like, okay, what's the next animal associated yeah. with India, which is peacock. So Kujaku is just peacock for ja uh, nice. Japanese for peacock. Let me tell you my worst experience was that I the first event I did many thousands of years ago I was a young guy and I had to uh, the name was a little difficult to you know I uh, forgive me it was London Blockley and you know now I mean it just was difficult and I do it all day I mean this three hour event and that's, you keep saying the same thing again and again you know, that's on the brochure so yeah my God. We've had some horrible moments when you think about it. This is real comedy actually because you know, it's just awkwardness which is the funniest thing ever. <laughs> the, the funniest thing is when everyone is trying to be serious and, yeah. and it ends up being just yeah. unexpected. And people are holding back because the disrespect that can you know permeate the room and you're worried about that at all points. Yeah. And especially at a corporate event, right? They, they, they have to go. Brother, see. Chris, you have no idea. You have no idea what I've done. See, I'm very good at, not very good, but I like just talking as you can, you know, that's my thing. But when you give the sheet with the names on it, that's the one thing you can't make up. The names, and you have to understand, they tell me, especially when they're foreign guys, yeah. like a Japanese guy, a German guy, they try to teach you the name. Mm -hmm. And then it just puts you into this fear zone. <laughs> Everything is great, you're going, you know, with all the people, you chat, you talk, you have fun, and then you have to say the name of Helmut Schkul. And it's not school, it's Schnul. You know, and these little things. I don't know, every single time they get you with that fear factor about pronouncing names correctly. So, so you, of course, know Larry David and Kobe. Love, yeah. I love it. For me, Larry, uh, I'm a huge Seinfeld fan mm. because you mentioned it and all. But I think Larry's writing now is like John and Paul. For me, I can tell the songs without being told which one is written which. Not to say one is better than the other, but there's a style. All the absurd mm. thinking is Larry David. Mm. You know, the boy in the George, right? boy George in the bubble. Is, yeah, George, the character. Yeah. But the, but if you're looking at the actual episodes, the boy in the bubble, for example, Soup Nazi. <laughs> I mean, that's madness. A guy who doesn't want you to talk to him when he serves you and you say one word wrong, you're out. I mean, what genius is that, man? It's, I love Larry Day. Curb your enthusiasm, I can watch it every day for the rest of my life. You know, you know the problem I had with Curb is, so I've, I've seen a lot of it like in clips and all on YouTube oh. and I started watch. so I'm saying this is like a long time back, I started watching the show actually. Yeah. And I felt I associated so much with his character on that, mm -hmm. that I genuinely got annoyed at the fact that the things that he was getting annoyed with, right? Me too. And, and, so, and so then I was like, this is bad. Like you cannot, <laughs> this is like, I feel like I'll become anti-social if I, if I go too deep into this hole. No, he's not anti-social. Why do people say good morning all the time? I don't know you. It's very irritating. He's absolutely spot on with that. Yeah. I agree with him. The problem is in some ways, the thing is, even if you think about it, right? He, he's the guy who gets thrown out of the dinner party because he said something that is, yeah. that is true, but yeah. deemed obnoxious, yeah. right? So, so remember the episode where he's supposed to write the obituary for his wife's aunt? And that's I all he has to do. All they're, the all, they're all crying. I'll just give you this much. They're all crying, okay? And they said, see, you're not the blood relative. So, you know, you obviously are the one who'll take charge. I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. So, he goes to write the obituary, okay? And they've given him the lines and all that. So, he comes back the next day for the family meeting and they are crying even more. 
So he said, what, you didn't like the obituary? And they're crying even more. So finally, they're looking at him and saying, how can you even show your face? But what, what, what was wrong? So apparently there was a typo. My beloved aunt, instead of A, it was a C. <laughs> And imagine if in reality, if someone dies and that goes in the Times of India and all the relatives are like, you know, what have you done? <laughs> you can't take it back. It's genius, bro. It's genius. My favorite, my favorite one is, so there's this, they have this party, yeah. uh, this dinner party, and there's like 10, 12 people. And one of the guests is his, I, I, I forget what connection, but someone he brings. No, 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 no. So he gets a survivor of the Holocaust, okay? Like a God. concentration camp survivor, okay? Oh. So he's survivor one. Mm-hmm. And then they get someone who who went on the reality show survivor, oh. okay? Oh. <laughs> so like one is like this old guy, like gone through hell, like Genius literal hell. Survivor. And there's one guy yeah. who came like third or something. <laughs> and they have an argument about who's the real survivor. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it's, it, the thing is, that's the thing, right? Sometimes you think about it. What your wiring has to be to even think of that. Forget doing it. Wow. How do you even come up with that? And the fact that it's insensitive also makes it funnier, right? I mean, he's Jewish descent himself, but I mean, it's just fab. It's like you said, it's the awkwardness that is just so unbelievable. I love that in comedy. I don't know. I just, just, it just doubles everything. It's like you're on edge after that, right? You can deliver the joke, but you deliver the joke and it's insensitive or just awkward and wrong. It's fantastic. I'll tell you why I brought all this up. Yeah. Have you ever thought of, I don't mean doing a copy or anything, what I mean is doing something because I feel like you could, you would be such an ideal person for that. Like if you think of a South Bombay context, like a guy who's, okay, life is great, but it's these inane... I, I have my inner Larry David because I complain why, about... No, why didn't you do a show with that? I ran so much, you have no idea, man. I think this would be an incredible show. It would be. There are awkward moments. You can, these kind of things, I'm sure you'll have your own. It's just fantastic. No, no, exactly. And that's the thing, right? Because it's, it, that's the thing. It's, we have to worry in this country. Yeah. It's funny how universal some of these seemingly unique oh, yeah, yeah. In, instances are, right? I'm not saying that this exact thing will happen to me. But I can, I can imagine like, people talk about random incidents which are so hilarious. But for some reason you can associate it because it's such a, it can be such a human thought or human... It's universal what you're saying because we sort of the identification is very important, it's fabulous. So when he, like David talks about, I'm bored of saying good morning. Why does everybody greet me? Doesn't that happen to you sometimes at the wrong place where eight, nine, ten people say good morning? And or, or in India we have this thing about what's up without the answer. Ah, what's up? And they walk past. What if I, what's up? Yeah, I've got cancer, I'm dying in three days. Nobody will respond. Because it's just, it's a rhetoric moment like what's up and gone. What's up means, uh, now listen to me. Don't say what's up and walk away. Listen to everything I have to say. And then react to my what's up. Yeah. It's, you had you have that experience with um, trying to replicate an American TV show in... <laughs> you know, I've, I've seen... I've seen. You know, I was the only guy who never saw Hello... Uh, sorry, Friends. This was... We shot it in 99. I was the only guy who had never seen it. But, but in all seriousness, it's like after... It's okay, y'all... It's one thing when it's just a script yeah. and then you actually shoot it and record it and see it. What was what was the feeling once you actually saw the clip? I mean the episode. No, the problem was not that it was in the script. Because for example, there's this thing about uh, he's, um, Chandler stuck with, or is it Shwima? I can't remember. One of us is stuck in a lift with one of the girls mm. and it's an episode about smoking, right? So he had to change everything because there's, because we can't show smoking. So I don't know what we did with the episode. The fundamental issue was so smoking. How many, how many episodes did you shoot? I shot 8 and then I ran away. I oh. used MTV as a cover. They shot 13. Um, because it was, the experience was not great. Also because I kept asking him questions which he could not answer. For example, it opens with David Schwimmer's character mm. losing his wife to another girl. He said, in apna, uh, Sanskriti mein ye sab chalega. But I said, but that's the funny part with due respect. If he loses her to another man, it's just a sad thing which everybody identifies with. If he loses her to a woman, we all have this awkward laugh. That's the genius of that script. Yeah. You take that premise away, what the F is the story of that whole episode? Yeah. Because now I'm just, So Nikhil yeah. Chinapa was playing his character, he's got his chin, uh, literally dub, double Chinapa, chin is touching the floor throughout, and I'm feeling sad for him. And you were feeling sad for him because you know, there's another guy. Oh, we can't have lesbians and everything here. What the hell? That's the joke. So they played around with a lot of that crap, you know. And then, of course, American cheeky uh, uh, dialogue in English doesn't translate in Hindi. You have to write it correctly. It sounds really archaic and, you know, odd. And of course, whatever. I mean, uh, we have to blame also because we should have shown more interest. I was more interested in what's there to eat and what time do we pack up. You must consider doing a curb. I, I don't mean a copy. I mean, like, 
like a guy no, no, going no, through right. life in Bombay and just so, who's generally happy but annoyed at very small. Yeah, the curve factory. We've understood that Larry Davis' thinking. Yeah. Ours is similar. We found that identification point. So then you just take it again. Localize the localization process will happen. Being in Mumbai, for example. I mean the VIP culture, which drives me mad. I rant about it all, but I can't. I live in Malabar Hill, so I really suffer it. It's ridiculous. Our chief minister has two houses. They're just few meters apart. Why? You know why? Apparently, they think one is got a Panwati because of no uh, chief minister last in Varsha, so that should not be the official residence. It's very dangerous. So they all, sooner or later they'll say this one's got the Panwati, so they'll have three houses. There's no end to it. So, so like I said, there's we get a lot of questions, and I've, I've sort of crowdsourced yeah. a bunch of common questions wow. people have uh. on money and and just and different experiences they have in life related to money in some way or the other, and questions they have. So I want to dive right in with one question that we got. You know, in many different forms, but essentially the same question. And I, I really wonder if you'll have a strong opinion on this or not. I, I sense you will. Yeah. I've, you know, it's the start of a new financial year, and people are thinking of their finances, and they've got bonuses. And so there's liquid. Who's got bonuses? <laughs> Again, after the AC, this is the second thing you've done to me today. No, nobody I know has got <laughs> somewhere out there. People other than the people in this. Which industry are we talking about? This is really booming. Are you talking about the defection from one party to another? That's booming. booming. It's yeah. it's interesting you say that. So. So there's money, liquid money that people have, and they're thinking of investing it. Mm. But the fear they have is that the current government will not come back into power, and the stock market will fall. That's what are your views? That's a real. I mean, I'm, I'm more happy with politics than economics, although they intertwine. I got to say, quite honestly, the chances of uh, Narendra Bhai not coming back is probably less than one percent. I, I you think it's even one percent? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's a no contest here, so I don't think that should be a problem. And of course, if they don't come back because of this one percent going berserk, then yeah, everybody's gonna you know that's gonna that's gonna be a situation no one's ready for. Mm -hmm. uh, as a liberal, you know, you can say I want this government, that government, and whatever. But uh, as a person who's trying to earn money in this country, possibly would not be the best thing that could happen. So right now, I would think that him staying in power and him staying in power, not necessarily his cohorts, uh, is. Is the only way forward. Wow, that's my interpretation from a political point of view, yeah. with the economics being the subliminal text. I think people shouldn't be negative and start thinking about you know just a plan for this and plan for that. So I just think this negative karma is unnecessary, in the sense that uh, don't think about stock market will go plunge down. And even if it did, India has always bounced back. Now we've had that ability to bounce back. We've never had like five bad years. You know, even in, in the pandemic, things were not good initially, but we were one of the stronger countries. So I, I think commercially this country, well, urban India, of course, because it's a little difficult to get into everything. But urban India is very boisterous, very robust. I personally feel, mm. and we always find a way. We have that jugad culture, and we we'll find a way around things. Then the worst times we manage to uh, don't go by by Jews, guys. I mean, there's always one thing that goes wrong. But look at how well they did in the pandemic, and then of course uh, made some wrong decisions, invested in some wrong places, made promises, and of course competition came. So yeah, that's gone. It's it's interesting getting. Serious answers from you. I, I I think you know it's and, and I, I I do mean this because I think because of your persona, your public persona, you're seen as just this humorous, funny guy. You mean Joker? <laughs> See that? No, I, that's I, a lovely I, word. There's a lack of respect in that. You know that? When they say that's a mere name Joker from that movie onward, Joker is like he's a Joker, like a loser. But but I don't think that's comedian has actually got a little uh, thing to but it. But you, are, you, you were seen as just this incredibly humorous, witty man, and and I think people forget that. In order to be humorous, you have to be. It requires a tremendous amount of intelligence. Right? Do you think of someone like Rowan Atkinson, for instance? I don't think a dumb guy could have been. He's a Cambridge Blue or something. Exactly. All exactly. right. I'm a I'm a Saint Xavier's art student. One year LLB uh, GLC around the corner here. Say, I will say this. Your memory is. I mean, I have rarely seen. Like you have a lawyer's memory. Your ability to recall. Like, I think for petty detail, I'm very good. Not just I think of like for example in cricket. I when you talk about cricket, yeah. you can say in 1973 this match was there and Mr X scored 26 runs in 44 balls. Was spot mean, on. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the young Jimmy Amarnath. <laughs> no, so those are unnecessary memory recalls. But I think your memory from childhood, whatever your strong passions were, cricket, sex, all that, the memories stay. So you can't do anything about that. But I'm not so good now with the 2020 culture. I can't remember the last game, although I follow it and watch it. So, so why, why do you think is it does it boil down to interest? No, I I think when you're young, your mind is just fantastic. It just takes everything in without you're not trying. Mm. I could do all the county cricket scores which would come in the Times of India. Mm. I could read them out. I, as in, I could just tell you yeah. later on. You know, Zahir Abbas for uh, Glamorgan scored 86 runs. Or I, I would have all that in my head. Unnecessary. <laughs> uh, I have so much unnecessary information that now I'm feeling better that my memory is fading. <laughs> you know, so finally I'll get peace. It's really unnecessary. Yeah. The question basically, in one way or the other, boiled down to. 
both the husband and wife are working and the husband is at some level concerned that the wife has started making more money than him. And is this your story, Krish? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> Let me be current. Sit on my couch. <laughs> so, 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 so people are people are concerned about the equation in the marriage and balance of power and whether the sexist so, question more than anything else. It's really not to do with politics or anything. No, no politics. Economy no, of the family. What What is your advice to people who think? Okay, see, I come from very. I've said this ten thousand times. I have very alpha females around me all my life. My mother, my wife, now my daughter. So I don't have a problem with strong women, and if, if I I don't see the competition. You see yourself as a tribe. Mm. If for. This spouse is doing better. Let's not get into male female. This spouse is doing better financially. The the tribe benefits. Mm. Why should it be either equal or why should it be this sexist uh, ramification from way back that the male has to do better? It's stupid. I think in many parts of the West now people have understood that maybe the woman is just better at a career. There's luck involved also in all these kind of things. So no biggie. I have no problem. I keep telling my wife work harder. In fact, I don't want her to come home. I'm like until you make your first million, you stay out. Yeah, so uh, this is purely sexist. I think if you, have, if you have a daughter, your perspective changes on all these things. Undoubtedly, it is sexist. But do you do you think, do you like what percentage of the population, if you were to guess, would say has shares your view on this? Very few. Or right, this is a very male dominated society. And let's not blame India. Hmm. The world is male dominated. The in in I mean, it's very tough. The chauvinistic mindset is very strong. And please, I'm not a feminist. I'm not into woke. I hate all those labels and calling and 15 the bathrooms for 18 people and all that has to end. But having said that, get off the complex that. You know, if you look at yourself as team, let's say team uh, Kothari, mm. and X is doing without getting to who X is doing better, it's the benefit of the team. You know, it pulls everybody up. You know, that's market economics. You know, one person doing well actually brings the whole industry up. It's not actually destroying the industry, as people think. So I have no problem. I, I honestly have no problem. I'm not just saying that. Yeah. If my wife was doing better than me, great, no problem. Who knows? She's an artist. Maybe a painting sell one day and they sell for cross. I put my feet up, bro. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I might even cut my toenails. <laughs> All good. Yeah, so you know, I agree with you. Uh, in India, this is, the mindset is a little different, not to be patronizing, but 100% different. And not, I'm not talking just rural India or the Indias we're not aware of. Urban India also, where we all, both of us come from, there'll be plenty of our friends and all that who will not share this. At least if they're being authentic, they might say the right thing for camera and all that, right. but, but I'm sure they won't. But that's a lot to do with, um, like I said, once I had a daughter, my life changed a lot in terms of sexism because I didn't realize, do you have kids? No. Okay, so you, you are, the experience with the daughter is very different from the son in the sense that one day my daughter asked me because we play music. I like music from the 60s and also I'm playing my stuff and all that and they, you know, they're listening in the car. One day she asked me, Dad, why didn't you play any female singers? Now here's the thing. I had no idea that I had like a sexist attitude to music and it's not even consciously done. So you can't say that maliciously I've done this, but I've grown up without any female singers really. To, to be fair, I really don't. I mean, one or two here, you know vaguely, but you're, I love the Beatles, I love Elvis, I love this one, that one. They're all males. Mm. Okay? So it just caught me in my tracks. And I remember talking to someone about that. I said, God, I have no female. So I had to go and find a couple of female singers quickly and try to, you know, and the balance was ridiculous. Point being that we don't know how sexist we are unconsciously uh, until you get caught out like that. Like, we, we probably are more than we know the way we were raised. And... You know, but the idea is to try and rectify that slightly and not be complex about it. By the way, I'm lazy, so who gives a flying, you know what? <laughs> if somebody else is making money, I'm happy to sit in my cave, watch YouTube all day. See, I'm a Leo and I love the lion, hmm. the ultimate animal. Okay, what does the lion do? He hunts once in his life, he mates a little bit here and there with all the lionesses, and he sleeps 18 to 19 hours a day, but they feed him first. <laughs> That's your hero. Grish, be the lion. The yeah. bugger does nothing. And everybody, king of the jungle, <laughs> you know, symbol, the great, the laziest, useless animal of the world. First, he doesn't live in the jungle because there's no jungle in the savannas and all where he lives. It's just plain land. That's where they, they, they live. And he just lies on his back all day. At the most, he may mate. That's his great thing. And he hunts very rarely. And then, of course, the end of his life is to defend himself when he dies. But other than that, what a life. 1899 is doing sweet F all and he got the best brand in Animal Kingdom. That's true. The Lion. We got clubs named after him. Lions Club Matunga, Lions Club Burivli. All because of the Lion. The Lion did nothing and they think we should give him a club. I mean, wolves and all work so hard. Where's their clubs? Ridiculous, man. Yeah, so I'm a big Lion fan. I got no issue with this. This is pure sexism and you're stupid. If your wife is doing... Okay, let's, let's look at famous women who are married. Okay, who are clearly... Like say a Margaret Thatcher. Okay, my, uh, this is my generation. <laughs> Sorry for the reference, but you know, I'm just thinking powerful, obviously had more money and everything. The, the husband just, you know, is happy. 
I mean, I mean, the classic case is Oprah, right? O- Oprah, but is there a marriage or that's a yeah, whatever, whatever it is? I mean, effect. I mean, so there's no contest. Oprah and what is the name? Stanton or Gary or uh, Stedman Stedman. Graham? Oh, you, you're like a you're like a young young lady yourself. You know all these details. <laughs> so yeah, so it's uh, I mean that guy's fine. The jokes doing the rounds in the old days when Oprah was at her peak or whatever. So you have all these, right? Huh. And so uh, what's the big deal? If it's, if it's reverse, you don't even bat an eyelid, right? If he was the Oprah and she was the whatever. But how, wow, what is wrong with us? I mean, what? so she's a successful one. A lot of success is also to do with luck, bro. Let's be honest. You think so? I, in the sense that I, I don't want to give a quantify it because that's difficult to do. But right place, right time, these kind of little things happen in people's lives sometimes and someone's career may go up, especially if they're both in, the, say, the corporate line or something. Mm. It's difficult to say for sure that they're 100% this one has more talent and uh, did better. It's possibly that that particular company did better. I mean, I, I'm just saying yeah. that there are other factors, you can't be complex about this. Yeah. You've got to back your people. The people I get on and it's interesting when you talk to them, how much they attribute, of, how much of their success they attribute to luck, right? Like you said, just being in the right place at the right time. And often what happens... I would never have been a VJ. If they'd done this, sorry to interrupt, the VJ hunt nonsense that started post yeah. um, me doing MTV, I wouldn't have even got through. You've got better looking guys, they'd be more bling, they'd be dressed well. I wouldn't have got through it. I, I think it would have been very difficult to get that first step anywhere. But but you you think you got on because you have the gift of the gap? I was lucky because the in my in the nineties they were looking at people who were already doing plays. Uh, I, I, we radio started with us in ninety three. Chris, you were still a spermatozoa, I think. And I, was, I was all of two years old. You were all of two years yeah. old, so you must have been a big fan. Because <laughs> that's, <my, laughs> that's my kind of commu- communication skill. Uh, so, you know, we did... So, it, the pool was just seven, eight of us that they would turn to for new, new things that were there in the television business, etc. Years later, you go to... If you go to a roadies uh, mm. th- audition, and I've run a few. I mean, there are thousands of people. How do you get out? How do you stand out? It's so tough. So I'm just saying, you're, you're lucky. Uh, sometimes, sometimes you're unlucky. Like I can never get parking in Fountain. In that sense, I'm really unlucky. Actually, I do. I, I know a guy. His name is Rajan. I'll share the name with you. Take my name, take my reference. He'll organize it. The next question I have is a little more macro. Okay. And um, so there's this idea that there's a changing economic world order. And the US over the next century is not going to be as dominant Are as they were. about the neighbor? And it's not just a neighbor, it's, it's, it's us, it's the neighbor, it's a number of other countries. And the question pertains specifically to the US dollar. Mm. Do you think the US dollar will lose its position as a reserve currency of the world? Again, I, I think that's going to be more difficult than people think. And when everybody talks about China taking over US and this and that, and obviously they're good at what they do, and they, they seem to have more discipline in terms of uh, the markets. Mm. Because the consistency of China is a little scary. Mm. But having said that, for the last few years, it's us who have been rising, if anything. So it's, I, I can't see the US not being a player. I just can't see that. They just People don't understand the one thing about the US. Okay, this is my observation. I might be wrong because I'm an out-of-work actor, singer, dancer. Uh, I do birthday parties at decent rates. Call him, he'll give you a 20% discount and I'll wear pants. Uh, the US is made up of people. Uh, you've been, right? Uh, they've got lots of morons. A huge middle belt of idiots. Let's face it. But they've got a fantastic, and a lot of them are immigrants, Fantastic top layer of super achievers, movers and shakers, entrepreneurs, scientists, inventors, people who change the world. It's just the way the, the, the way the society is, that's why you go there. You know, the best uh, brain in Belgium says, I need to go there. That's where I get my bang for my buck. In India, go there. China, go there. So they'll always have that. And as long as they always have that, they have talent. And that kind of talent, I believe, is it's like universal talent which no other country is getting. Mm at the speed that they are getting. So I always believe there will be a player. I think this is just people trying to speculate. I may not be doing it because they don't like the US or whatever, because there's a certain logic to it. You expect Asian market rising. Obviously, if something rises, simple rule of economics, something will go down at the same time. But I personally feel they, they may be less than what they were, but they will never be dwarfed. I don't think so. Go USA! <laughs> it's, it's interesting. So I, so I, I studied there and... Where, which East Coast? Uh, East Coast in Philadelphia. And so a lot of, so it's this common stereotype, right? There's these fat, dumb Americans. Yeah. They don't know what the hell they're doing. Yeah. And you go to, like, like you said, right? You go to that certain slice yeah, of yeah, society yeah, in terms yeah. of yeah. Uh, capability, intelligence. And you realize how unbelievable the talent there is. That's what? They are unbelievably intelligent. Mm. They are in great shape. 
Let me tell you, this yeah. this idea that all Americans are fat guys roaming around eating blocks of cheese is nonsense. You know, there's a there's a certain I don't want to say Bible Belt and all that, and start becoming like racist and all. But there's a certain group you'll see women. I've never seen women in jeans who are so almost made me gay. I mean, they were they were like states. It was like Florida, and there was Jean, you know, wearing her. I mean, and I, I so there is that also. There is a little, and that that looks almost obnoxious. It's wrong to body shame, but it looks almost obnoxious that because they flaunt it. <laughs> They're very confident people, right? Yeah, yeah, I, the ladies we grew up with, or even the men we grew up with, if they're not happy with their body, they'll really be covering themselves and all kinds of... You, you know how we guys are. And there, I was just stunned with the Bindas attitude of, let's say, the lady who's never seen a stair climber or, you know, elliptical or anything in her life and never will. Uh, so I'm just saying that again, not to point fingers, but I do believe there's a lot of that as well. Yeah, no, agreed, agreed. But, but, but I'm saying this, you, you realize like when you go there, you realize if you, because like I went to a good school, so it's obviously really? by different at UPenn. Wow. So, so like everyone who's there is obviously, right? Everyone was top of their class yeah. and this and that. Yeah. And it's crazy the kind of people you meet. But see, you guys become the achievers. That's the American way, right? Yeah. Uh, it, that, it maybe I don't want to throw, again, this regionalism will come back to haunt us. But if you look around the world, maybe very often the local guy is the idiot. Okay, I won't take names in Mumbai, but he does the least work. And then you want to throw out North Indians, but they do a lot of work. If we throw out, say, the North Indians from Mumbai, we'll, we'll have a problem because they actually are hardworking people when they're here. So similarly, there, I think the immigrants, the foreigners, the guys like you come there. So which Indian has done badly, quite frankly? It's, I, I think oh, it's almost impossible. I think literally Indians who have, so first, second, third generation Indians are, if I'm not mistaken, statistically, the yes. highest performing yes. uh, sort of... Ethics. And we have English skills. So on top of that, we beat the Asians who are next to us, like Japs and Chinese who are close to us in terms of enterprise, but uh, we can talk. We also, I, I think between us, uh, the, uh, the other thing is we like the American way. Most of us accept it, you know, the, the habits and all of the Americans. The Indians are very good with that. Let's say you were 18 today. Would you study computer science or whatever, engineering? Or Not engineering. I didn't have the brain for that. So I wouldn't go into uh, motor skills, mechanical skills, electronics, IT. No way, no way. I would have done law. I, I like the written word. That I'm okay with that, and I, I would like to. The lawyers are lawyers uh, who practice in court, of course. I think there's, there's a bit of like my good friend Abad Ponda. We work out together in the morning. He's a very highly ranked lawyer. Uh, Freddie Ponda, his mom was the first woman in the Supreme Court, etc., etc. So uh, he's a performer. So you can see that also. You know, I mean, the, the, the only difference is the set, ultimately, and then he tells us stories and all. It's great fun. Once you reach a certain level in, in your profession, if you're a lawyer, I mean, you're basically going there and giving a performance and people come to watch you. They enjoy Some judges like you because they know there's going to be some wit. There's going to be some... I do uh, online, there's a couple of Indian judges. Uh, they're in the north, basically. But I've been following them. It's quite funny, man, the interactions. And one guy was saying... Uh, so this, this uh, uh, plaintiff comes and talks about... Uh, um, they have an argument. And the, the other, the defense lawyer says, I don't want to listen to this man anymore. I can't bear him. So the judge says, you can't bear him. I have to listen to him every day. <laughs> it's just small moments like that. And especially... And their personalities. When you see the senior counsels, yeah, yeah. unbelievable, unbelievable sound. Like, I mean, you're saying Abad Pond. Yeah. I mean, he's an intimidating guy to look at. Yeah, yeah. He's a powerlifting champion at 19. Oh, really? That side, nobody knows. I mean, I mean, you at see 19, him, you can tell this guy he, he, He's you. a boy from... Yeah, but he's a boy from uh, our area. Hmm. Powerlifting uh, as a sport is... Again, I don't want to be classes, but not really a sport of South Bombay. A, B, he's fighting people from Bengal and Punjab who come from the most rudimentary sort of backgrounds and taking all kinds of, uh, let's say, enhancers. And this young kid, just just pure talent, great wrist, big glutes, coming and squatting 500 pounds at 19, etc, etc, etc. And so he's, uh, I love that guy, he's fantastic. And then of course, uh, kept his mom's and dad's legacy going. Mm. And uh, his stories are fabulous, you should get him on. Yeah, I, I Oh mean, my I God, really because he does a lot of criminal stuff. Exactly. And I, I mean, it's... So the things they send, first he's got a sweet tooth disorder. So, I mean, he cannot stop eating sweets. He has, uh, I forgot the name of the, uh, the, there was a buffet, a veg buffet somewhere in, in our area only. I forgot which one. When he was about 20, 21, he ate all the kulfis that were there. Huh? Matka kulfis were about 52 or something. They counted it. The guy came and told his dad boss was cool. Abhi, abhi, please, ab ghar jana. Because they didn't have the budget. They, 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 you ex I mean, the sweets are a very important part of a buffet, bro. And everybody goes a little crazy on that. But he finished everything. And apparently he sent his, you know, uh, brother and this and that because it looked bad after some time. So emissaries were going to get it. Yeah, who well, loves his sweets? Yeah, I'll, we've digressed to Abad. Yeah. It's Abad show. <laughs> <laughs> so performing, so I, I, would, I would... See, I come from four lines of law, four generations of lawyers. I think Neeti, your wife is six. We are four. 
my great grandfather shapurji brocha built the stock exchange his really? bus was there till they just took it out now because they're doing reconstruction and all that and uh, the philanthropist you know shapur bag is named after him lots of money mostly in the parsi community but it was all done by him so we own don mills and phoenix mills which the ruyas own right now the family owned the deed went to the kilachans one of the kilachans was in class with me he showed me the deed when i was a young man wow. i was like you effing <laughs> give me back my land and not the kilachans did anything with it it, it took uh, you know atul ruya was uh, every generation you know and then you have a third or fourth generation where they revive the entrepreneurship okay. that's another very you should get those guys on and and also you have to like you said right that's where timing comes in like you have to be alive at the time when there was scope to do something with it that 100% yeah. is there and then you have to match it with the with the man who is an entrepreneur okay. this entrepreneur gene is not for everyone mm. i want to be an entrepreneur but i have never been able to you you have an idea for a business oh i have had 2000 ideas including the ipl what do you think is your best idea uh, the IPL, ipl was my idea look in the sense that the t20 cricket was being played in 2006 7 and i woke up my parents and said watch this format in england huh. there was no show show about it and it, because it was late india time was like 9ish in the night i said just watch it it ends in 3 hours and we started watching it and i said this will this will change cricket completely and I, I, i just why didn't i try to do more with that but because i could see it <laughs> but but someone did try and he got trampled right i mean before ipl those icl if you remember yes yeah that's true so I, I, mean, i i don't know how far you would have yeah, gone involve the bcci so yeah. that that's fair to say but uh, what we don't know is that arun lal and piyush pandey i don't know if you know arun lal was an ex cricketer of india opening batsman with sunil gavaskar and played for bengal uh piyush pandey is the greatest advertising man bar none that india has produced they were classmates they had come up with this idea before lalit modi but nobody took them seriously about pushing a t20 league and all that mm. having said that give the devil his due because you, you, the idea is there lalit executed the idea okay. which is another talent altogether i think where i'm weak i think ideating is not a problem lots of ideas come and go with most of us mm. executing an idea from start to finish that detailed specific mindset the dynamism that goes with it so i'm a huge fan of lalit modi whatever you all say put him in thing first there's no case against him from as far as i can see as a cricket lover the only problem with him is he was brash and he comes from a generation which doesn't give respect to seniors in the way we are used to you know pao pao and so he would talk to the owners of these franchises in a very like we are talking to each other you know just a crash cyrus you know which is you don't you have to have your g's in place and mr mr wo sab hai and he, he wouldn't do that it was just basically that his demeanor and personality which they couldn't bear foot on the table while talking you know that kind of thing lots of f words whatever he's been he's it's like i don't know it's a sad story as far as i can tell he just it's just his personality which which didn't uh, work with these mandarins of india I'd imagine hypothetically you had started the ipl wow would the format be different what would you do differently if you were in charge right now um i don't like the impact player rule so there are a few rules i would have changed but this big being very technical about cricket mm. Okay, and because I, I'm from the 80s and 90s, so for me, you know, there's a little conservatism. So it's difficult to talk to a person who's born much later and straight into this. Um, I don't think it's difficult to perfect what it is now. It's as close as a league in the world of sports as there is in terms of success. It gets better every year. You can check year 17. Every year has been better. So if you're looking from a finance point of view, there's a finance show. That's a great blueprint. So it's very difficult for me to say that I could have done this, that, and the other. Small little things I would have done for sure. I I think that four uh, foreign player rule they could have made it five. I don't see why that's a problem because there are a couple of weaker teams. Mm. Uh, Punjab won. La- we're doing this telecast after Punjab won, but they've you know there are two or three teams who always languish at the bottom. So maybe they would benefit with a fifth player, for example. Some of them use only three because they just got a lot of Indian talent. But I think a little flexibility there to make the make it not like top heavy with four teams and bottom heavy with four teams and two in the middle or something. So that maybe, but these are small things. I mean, it's a super success. There's no question. It spawned league everywhere. There's the hundred. There's the big bash. There's Bangladesh is almost the second biggest money spinner with their league, and there are no Indian players in it. Pakistan is surviving on PSL. Uh, West Indies have their own, uh, you know, uh, Caribbean Premier League CPL. So, and now we've got uh, USA coming up with it. Uh, the Gulf with all their money. Mm-hmm. You know what they're doing with football and golf and everything else. They might just hijack cricket because nobody knows how much money there is there. Think you think the World Cup in the US will? Uh, in the long term have any effect on making it a bigger sport in that country we just not been able to sell it to um, non desis and west indians and sri lankans and pakistanis or whatever so you have to go beyond our ethnicities that's not happened i don't know i i do it's too strong baseball is too strong nfl is too strong i mean you were there for much longer time than i am if anything you guys get washed into nba and nfl and you know rather than the other way around you get me to watch uh, your ethnic americans if i can call them that non desis non cricket country guys mm. to come and watch the game then it's growing otherwise what you're doing is your immigrant population is playing it but they're playing it anyway 
Correct. They organize it. Those who love the game miss their country. You know, it's like watching a Hindi film. They'll still do it, right? Actually, I think there is tremendous scope to get good cricketers like from yeah, Americans. Baseball. No, no, no. Baseball players to play cricket. I'll tell you why. I'll give you. Chuck. No, no, not not the bowling. I'll give you like I think in batting and in fielding. I'll I'll give you an example. So we used to so in college we used to play cricket. Mm. Like you know in the sort of open areas mm. and so sometimes like a white guy would be walking by and just out of curiosity would say, "Can I play?" Yeah. And they would be because they had all and Jenny was someone who had played baseball in life. The ball sense is great. Ball sense and their fielding, like they can, like someone you whack a shot and it's like flying through the air. This guy just sticks his hand and catches wow. it. I feel like the Maharaja of Patiala. <laughs> you get ten Americans to field and you bat. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, so the thing is, obviously, like they don't have the their swing. They naturally swing it differently. Yeah. But the fielding, because for them, catching is just one. You stick one hand yeah, out. And I've seen thing. those catches. They're ridiculously. A, I mean, okay, you have a, have a mitt, but still, it's a the basic thing is just one claw outside yeah. and you have to catch it. So they were incredible fielders. Yeah. So I, I feel like there is some scope to get like people who play baseball and maybe some people. Who Who haven't succeeded, mm-hmm. like you know, who made it like semi-pro, mm-hmm. and get them into cricket. I mean, I think there is potentially chance for something like that happening. Uh, we've got the money now. They're saying second biggest league in the world. I don't know how true that is. You got the EPL, you got us, and you got uh, NFL above NBA, which I, I didn't. I thought NBA would have more money than anybody else, but apparently not. And the thing is, NFL is just too big. It too big. Just yeah. too big. There. Yeah. It is. But it's a one-country game. Uh, you know which is why it's so remarkable we are we are still i i've got what 200 million in pakistan about 300 million in bangladesh all watching ipl i've got 80 million in uh, uk i've got 25 million in australia I mean, you add them all up yeah It's not. It, we have more to play with, you know. Western East Sri Lanka, little, little, little. We add them all up. But I think the the main thing is the Americans have done just an unbelievable job in making it a business, right? In making it an yeah. attractive thing where yeah. people go and spend. It's an experience. No, and the, we've copied them. The, the, our league has copied them a lot, in, including the what's it called, the, 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 the auctions and all that, auctions. cheerleaders, everything. And we've taken all the best points from them. And culturally, like I said, they're so bloody rich, now. How do you break that? It's in our watch cricket. Hmm. You, you you've been there. You know how it is. It's just that's bums in seats. They watch. Okay, the preferred game is X, Y, or Z. But it's to break those three, four sports of theirs and get into it and say, here, take a look at this fifth sport. But you know, athletics and all have have trouble. You know, mm. which is still an American sport. They still have trouble competing with the big three. Yeah, for sure. When I was at college, Usain Bolt was. I mean, he was still active at that yeah. point, and he had come. So so my college had once a year they have this massive track and field meet, and they get like, I mean, I guess the biggest names in those. Mm-hmm. Um, Um, sort of uh, sports, but obviously not household names. And so Usain Bolt had come for it once, yeah. and and I mean this is that, by the way. So that's the biggest name in athletics. Yeah, it is. I mean, you, I mean it is, right? after it's that, the next year the guy is a joke. Correct. Whoever comes is like, I, I, hello, I am Mr. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Savalas from Mexico. I was second time. Yeah. Exactly. Like you think of like, like, like him in uh, him in athletics and like Phelps in swimming, right? There's like who's number two? Top, God knows, no, right? Who the hell knows who number two is, right? So, but I mean, this is again. They ran so fast, or swam so fast. Nobody knows who's behind. Yeah. The point I was making on Usain Bolt, it's that just having one guy, like a big name, the kind of interest it generated. Hmm. So sometimes I think that you know, if you can, if you can, like for example, if you somehow get, say, like a Michael Jordan to associate himself with hmm. cricket in hmm. in America. And how that can like sp- I mean just you know sometimes you it's need a that start yeah, it's exactly. a start but the, after the curiosity wanes a little bit will the people still get into it that that uh, stuff I have seen uh, I'll give an example a metaphor if you like let's cause some trouble <laughs> like try to sell Hindi in Chennai just did a stand up comedy hmm. a bit in uh, a show there I did some jokes about Hindi in Chennai. They laugh their heads off because you know they absolutely the thing is a lot of them speak Hindi hmm. but they don't like the yoke of Hindi on their neck hmm. because you're sort of forcing it on them. And that's what they don't like. So it's never. I remember I used this line. Uh, isn't uh, Hin- isn't uh, Chennai the place where Hindi comes to die? And they loved it. They got standing ovation and all. It's sort of true, okay? Because the uh, Tamil language is richer. Their culture is very strong. So you can't come with your little language and say, "Okay, I'm going to penetrate this market and change everything." And you know, it doesn't. It it will never happen. And it hasn't happened. The same thing with these damn sports of America. They're just so strongly immersed in the psyche of the American. How do you break it? And like I said, you guys, mm-hmm. you Desi boys who are studying there, you start drifting towards them rather than they drift to us because it is so powerful. Correct. You do you do a lot of stand up? Well, I have to pay bills because <laughs> the kids are young. But uh, yeah, I, I don't. Do, I do more of these event shows and all that. Mm. I don't want to land up in bars. I have to stay up all night and you know, and your jokes aren't very good. All you have to do is fight with the hecklers, which is also great fun. But uh, I'm too old for that. Yeah.
too. But a lot of guys I work with, they do, the, they really work hard. These comedians, some of them. In fact, in the morning they're a waste of time because they never wake. But they do three, four gigs. Sometimes with three people, four people. Mm. They, they, you know, they're paying their bills. That way. let's hope that one day they really hit the big time. Yeah, it it's the Beatles in Hamburg, right? It, it is exactly that. You don't know where you're going to be, but you have to, you know, start somewhere. So a lot of them have a very, very active nocturnal discipline of working. And uh, then, of course, they will take jobs on top of that. They're horrible in the morning. But it's, it's, there's a fantastic story that Jerry Seinfeld talks about. Yeah. So, because like some young, it's, it's a fantastic, you can like, see it on, on YouTube. Yeah. Some young comic at some point meets him at some club mm -hmm. and says, oh, you know, I'm 29 years old. Things aren't really working out. All my friends have, they went into more conventional careers, mm -hmm. doing well. My parents are like, you know, you got to stop this. You got to earn some money. You can't pay your bills. And so Jerry Seinfeld is like just looking at him like, what the hell are you talking about? Mm -hmm. And he says, this is my favorite story about um, not just not just being a comedian, but just being in showbiz and sort of doing something different from the conventional path. He says, there's there's a plane full of an orchestra traveling somewhere in the US going to some place to perform. And they're flying and they're flying over the Midwest and suddenly the plane crashes. Oh. And so they have to land, you know. In I hope that's not the punch. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, crashes in the sense where there's some problems, so they'll yeah, land so in a cornfield in a, in a farm somewhere, okay? So there these, and it's like raining and it's cold and it's miserable and they're like wading through mud. And so then they're carrying these massive instruments and they, they're walking, walking, and finally they come across this house. And so the farmer is sitting there with his wife and two kids and they're having this wonderful, cozy meal and everyone's lovely and it's this incredibly scenic Norman Rockwell sort of scene. Wow. And one, one guy in the orchestra turns to the other guy and says, can you believe people live like this? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so it's just, it's, just it's, a, it's a mindset, right? It's that you have to, that you have to be willing that, it's just pure love that drives you to do something. But also you, you can tell people who are in the entertainment business, the funny thing is you can struggle for 20 years. It takes one thing, one night, one thing to blow up. One show, one event, one video, one movie, one ad, something. So people will also remember that life is really strange. You know, you could be a journeyman for 20 years and suddenly become world number one. It's like that. It's not impossible. If someone came to you and said that I want to be in an You should ask this question from two perspectives. One is a general person talking to you. There's no lena dena. Uh, it's a very different thing. Right. Uh, so we get these guys at airports and all. I want to be VJ, I want to be actor, I want to be comedian, I want to be this, that and the other. It's different. But if your kids or your kids' friends come to you and you feel a sense of responsibility, how do you answer it then? Because mm. that's a little different. Because mm. then you start thinking like a father or like a father figure. It's a very different thing altogether. So I really don't know what to say, but I'll say one thing. You only live once. And I realize that it sounds very cliche, but it's absolutely true. If you really feel you want to do something, don't be that 50 year old effed up guy who's frustrated with his life. May have done well, mm. but hates being a lawyer. Mm. You know, all he wants to do is sing. He had a voice like Kishore Kumar and he watches all these shows and he's just frustrated and unhappy. He starts hitting the bottle, hates his family, hates his life. But that should not happen. I mean, it's better to struggle a little bit, not pay your bills, you know, whatever, be a loser in other people's eyes for some years. Because you can always come back to do something conventional if the, you know. So I always tell people just, please try. Do not try. Because if you don't try, you'll never know. I mean, it's, it's again, it's infantile conversation, but it's true. When I used to do a show called MTV, I was interviewing these kids uh, North, South, East and West. What talent there was. There were great singers, there was great comedians, writers, artists, Hindustani classical vocalists. I remember once in uh, Mysore, uh, like, I mean, unbelievable talent, da Indian classical dancing, Western dancing, um, you know, instrumental playing. I mean, uh, just suddenly you think, are you really doing the right thing by becoming a doctor? Because you've got serious talent and, and word gets around in the campus. So they know this is serious talent, but won't take it seriously. Because middle class mentality, do my medicine, whatever, and I, you know, surgically cutting off the wrong, you know, kidney or whatever, because you know, your mind is not in it, because you're singing some song in your head and feeling frustrated. That's a bit sad. That, for that, you have to blame us, the parents. Or my generation. But, but, but can you really, in the sense that... No, that's, that's what I'm yeah. saying. You look at it as a father. What would you do, Krish, if you were... It's a little difficult to answer when it's your responsibility thing because your fear is there. So you want that insurance because that middle class insurance mentality is there. But my, my point is when you're young, try it. Now, if you're 21 to 25, F it if you don't really make it. Give yourself four or five years, be fair. And then you can catch up with your friends mm -hmm. who are now heading uh, some agency at 27 and you're starting again. So what? you got the rest of your life to catch up with him. So, that, I mean, it's easy to say and not so easy to do something with the fear of life and all that. But I honestly think when you're young and you're confident and strong, go for it. On that happy note, can we stop? Because I've yes. got to meet another rich Absolutely. man. <laughs> uh, it's been my pleasure uh, to be on the Sensei Kujako. <laughs> I hope I said it correctly. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. We, we, with AI, I can make you say whatever I want now. So. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you for coming on. Great pleasure. Thank you.